Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to MacBreak Studio. I'm your host, Mark Spencer, and with me today, surprise, surprise, we have Steve Martin. Yep, I'm here again. To talk good to see you. Good to see you, too. Excited to show you some new cool stuff. New cool stuff about what? Well, I thought we'd take a look at Color Correction in, in Final Cut Pro in Final 10. Cut Pro 10. Yeah. Color Correction in Final Cut Pro 10. Yes. So you can do Color Correction in Final Cut Pro 10. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Using the color square. The color I mean, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the color it's square. It's the color board, actually. The color board. It's okay. a color board. Okay, the color board is a co as opposed to color wheels. You've got <laughs> color square. I caught you off guard, didn't <laughs> you did, I? You did. Yeah, okay, but, well, but it really, look, the color board is, is, is a paradigm shift from color wheels, the way we're used to working in and traditional um, color grading apps, but right. it's really powerful and it's very fluid. I mean, once you uh, kind of get used to how it works, you can, do some, yep. you can do some amazing stuff in it. Well, to me, it's like every part of Final Cut Pro 10, the more I spend with it and wrap my head around each of the components, the, you know, the magnetic timeline and yeah. the metadata-driven everything, it starts to really make sense. And yeah. the, for me, you get fast. That's Very fast. That's the key. It's fast. speed. It's yeah. all about speed. You go now. back to Final Cut 7 and you're like, it's like going into molasses. I mean, you just you get very used to this after just spending a little time Absolutely. with it. Absolutely. So why don't you show us what you're going to do here? Okay. So what we have uh, on the timeline are, well, three clips. And by the way, this is uh, uh, from a shoot that actually Mark and I are doing up in Napa right now. We're shooting a, a video on this uh, amazing winery, $150 a bottle, bottle of wine country. And th this is just one of the shots. And uh, if you look at this, this, this image, we shot it with the DSLR camera and we used a flat profile. Um, so that way we can kind of uh, stretch the dynamic range of the image. Okay, so, yeah. we, so we make it look bad. By default, it looks bad, but it actually has room to grow. Exactly. Right? So this would be a kind of akin to shooting raw. I mean, you're not really shooting raw video, yeah. but it's akin to giving you kind of this, um, this uh, range to actually pull out detail. Right. So that's what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you that in the context of a very common color correction scenario, which is um, limiting your correction to certain portions of the frame, what we typically call secondary secondary, secondary color yes. correction. Primary would be correcting the entire frame. Uh, secondary would be, let's let's work on just a portion of the frame. Okay. And so what I'm about to show you is a technique that a lot of colorists use where, let's say, like in this image, it's 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 very, um, you can see it's, a, it's very bright at the top of the frame, mm -hmm. and we want to maybe work on just the top, bring the bring the luminance, bring the brightness down without it affecting the bottom portion of the frame. Okay. Um, we might do that to, say, create a, what's called a grad effect. Like if you were shooting video, you might have a filter on that has a kind of a gradient, like a, a half gradient, and half. Like a gradient, okay. Right, and you can do that in post, and which yes. which we're going to do with this, this uh, uh, this mask in the color color board. Great. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. Let's do it. So, so I'm going to select this clip and I'm going to go to the color board. Let's go over here to the magic wand, say show color board and command six, bring it up. And uh, actually, I left something out. Before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and limit the correction. I, was, I said I was going to do that first before we okay. go to the color board. You'll see these two buttons here. One says uh, add shape mask, one's add color mask. Okay. okay we're going to work with a shape mask. As soon as I click that, you'll see I get a, a, a circular shape over the image. Um, but a lot of people want well, a circle. Um, what can I do with a circle here? Well, there's this little drag handle. If you pull on that, you can actually turn it into, uh -huh. into a square. Okay, or anything like in that. between, rounded or, rectangle. Rounded, rounded rectangle, exactly. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is to just grab the square, just kind of pull it out and stretch it across the image like this. Okay. okay. And then you'll see you have a drag target. So I can just move this whole thing up the top, top of the frame here like that. And you'll notice that this line here, this area in here, this is for the feathering. So you can control how um, the, the, the secondary correction feathers into the portion that's okay. not being corrected. So the correction that you're about to do will only occur within the area defined by this mask Correct. and the feathering. Exactly. As, as opposed to the other option, which was a color, which would limit your correction to specific color values. Exactly. Okay, so you could just make all the greens more saturated. Right, or I can just click something. on the white sky and just sat, just work on that. I see, okay. Exactly. But, but you're we'll, working on a shape, basically. Exactly, okay. just a shape. So now that we have it selected, now we're gonna go into the color board. Okay, and the one way you can do that is uh, you have this little arrow here, we'll just click that, now we're in the color board, okay? Now, I'm going to be working inside the mask. How do I know that? You'll see a button that says here, Inside Mask. Now, I'm going to go to the exposure. This is typically where you start. You want to okay. work with the, uh, the luminance values. I'm just going to go ahead and just bring down the overall uh, brightness of the 
of the image. Notice it's only affecting the top half of the image, right. not the bottom half. See, so I'm bringing this down, and just so you can see this feathering, uh, as you, I can pull, you can see how that's feathering it, it into the image. It spreads it out, it's so you don't have a hard line. You don't have a hard line, two. exactly. Yep. So, so there, I'm bringing it down here, and um, see, it's bringing out a lot more details in, in the, kind of the yeah, background Yeah, you get some detail back that, that you know, usually you think when you blow something out, the detail's gone, but you actually seem to be able to recover a little bit in there. Absolutely. Now, what we're going to do is go to the, um, I'm going to go to the, the color portion. This is actually the color board, even though I clicked on a color wheel. Okay. Uh, here's the color board. And what you want to do is, I, I want to kind of warm up the sky a little bit. I want to kind of give the idea that maybe it's, uh, you know, early morning or what have you. Okay. I kind of want an orange just kind of feel. So I'm going to just grab this target, which is the overall um, color balance for the entire blacks, mids, uh, the shadows, mids, and highlight tonal ranges. So it represent, okay. represents all of them. Right. Um, so what I'm going to do is just drag this over here to the to the red side of the color board, and to add more of, let's say, orange, I want to go into a positive direction. Not notice here that you have um, you have the little plus. That means you're going to be moving into a positive yes. direction. Yes. So I'm going to just grab this, and I'm going to just kind of I'm going to just add a little bit of warmth uh, to the image right there. Now, as you can see, this I'm doing that because it's a global control for color balance. It's actually this, you know, adding kind of this orange color to the Jeez. trees. Can you go too far and then come back? Sure, just, absolutely. I, I was, everything I do, I like to go too far and come back just to see, okay, so you can really see you the really, impact of it yes. there. And yeah. then you can go in the negative direction and it puts you push it so in the opposite taking, direction. You're taking the red out. Taking the red out. adding the opposite, okay. Right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and push it to about here. I don't want too much, just subtle. I mean, that's all for me. It's, color grading is about subtlety yes. a lot of times. So I push it a little bit that way. And I wanna take some of the reds out of the tree. So that would be this control, the shadows. Okay. So the thing is, you have to know is you need to move it into that tonal, in that, that area, color area, yeah. and then you're gonna just I'm gonna just pull down yeah. into a negative direction. So you can see, like I'm pulling some of that orange out of the shadow, just out of the just, shadows, just so out of the, it shadows. In the mids and highlights, exactly. And those overlap each other somewhat, right? Those shadows, they, mid tones, highlights. There's some interaction. They, they, there is them. some interaction, and but because the sh the tree is so much in shadow, you see. Yeah. The most really pronounced effect. Out. Yeah, it really Very pulls nice. it out there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and adjust this a little bit so you can see what's going on. Now, now it's, it's, what's interesting here is I can now work on the lower portion of the image. Okay. And have a completely a separate color correction for the lower portion of the image simply by clicking this outside, outside mask. mask. Remember, we're working inside the mask now. Right. Now I want to work outside the mask. Makes sense. And so I'm going to go on the outside of the mask. I'm going to start with exposure. And what I want to do is just lower the mid-tone. So I want to kind of bring out some of the mid-tones and make this kind of crisper image yeah. at the bottom. So I'm going to go it's ahead and increase grab... Increase the contrast a Right, bit. increase the contrast. So I'm going to notice, we're just going to pull the mids kind of down okay. a little bit like this. All right. And I might uh, yeah, maybe to pull a little shadow. So a little darker there. And again, play with this ba uh, border so I can just kind of... I'm feathering. The feathering, yeah. yeah. See, what I'm doing is I'm uh -huh. feathering kind of that orange into into the uh, lower half of the image. Yep. But remember, I'm working on a, this outside mask. This is a separate color correction from the inside mask. So notice I can click back and forth, two separate. I'm, in, I'm working on exposure. And work them independently. Work yep. them independently. So, so I'm working outside the mask. I'm gonna go back to, let's say, color. And right, let's say if I wanted to you know, add a little bit more orange uh, in the mid-tones, I'm gonna grab the mid-tone uh, target and just kind of push it into the midtones just a little okay. bit like this. Yeah, it See? kind of warms up the it ground. Warms up in the there ground, think, exactly. Uh -huh. And it might be earlier, it might be an earlier portion of the day. You might yeah. not see as much detail. Um, so what I might go do here is, is go into saturation and actually then bring down the saturation of that orange, just to because there wouldn't uh -huh. be as much, uh -huh. it wouldn't seem like if I really push it, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be that pop. So I just kind of bring it down a little bit. So I also want to make it pop. I just like this is super saturated. Right, I know, but <laughs> sometimes... But it's not it, realistic, I know. It's not, the, it's not right. what you're going for here. You're going for a subtle effect here, well, this morning kind of effect. Right, right, because right, if there's not as much light, you're not going right. to see saturated colors. Yes, so absolutely. So I, I brought down... A little, a little gray kind of, <laughs> yeah. And so, it's good. It really uh, creates a more evocative mood for it, doesn't it? Absolutely. So here, we, so all we did was just use a simple shape mask yep. to control the uh, color grading at the top of the frame and the bottom of the frame. You have a lot of control there, and uh, I actually wish there was a button that I can do a, like in color. You're going to Command G. You can actually toggle the toggle grade on, on and off. There's, yeah, right. You have to kind of go go back, go back out. and then you've got to turn the color. It's, it's an extra click. I wish there was a, like a command key to be able to do that. While you're quick. still doing your correction, you want to be able to toggle want, it. It's really important because you get used to it, right? You're working on doing corrections, and whatever your correction was, it starts to become normal. It starts to look normal because you've been looking at it too long. Yeah. And if you toggle off, you're like, wow, that's I went much further than I realized. Yeah. I usually stare out the window. 
window and blink really fast yeah. and then look back at the screen and that kind of reorients me in my eyes. eyes. Exactly. <laughs> but you can see here, it's quite dramatic. I mean, uh, the yeah, difference here. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Huge can difference. you just zoom in a little bit so people can see, maybe see it a little bit closer since we're... Uh, oh yeah, we can see it. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so there, there we, we are. Um, so you can see before, there's before. It's pretty flat. Yep. And here, yep. we brought out the detail pretty and nice. we've added a little bit of uh, color to the sky and the ground to get to kind of hint at, you know, early morning or... Now, if I the, wanted that, I did all that, and I, I liked it, and I need to apply it to other clips, do I have to, like, do that whole thing all over again? Is there a way I can... Well, the easiest it? way is to... Well, there's two ways to do that. Okay. One is you can select the clip, and you can uh, copy it. Okay. And then you can paste the effect onto this other clip. You okay. can just edit, uh, paste effects. But there's a better way to do it. Okay. And I, I was playing because with Because paste this. effects will paste any, everything. anything you've done. Transformations, Every, other filters, Everything. Anything. Yeah. But there's a better way to do it. Okay. And then I was playing with this on the airplane. Um, actually, when I was waiting for my other plane to arrive. So, <laughs> so here's... What's really neat is if I select this right here, and there's this great feature, and if you select the clip, yes. you'll notice here it says match color. Yes. If I click this choose button, I can then... Then go over to this clip that I've already color graded yes. and find a frame. Say, so let's say it looks good and just click. It's a still and image. Just still frame. See, I just clicked. And right here, you can see well, it's, it's, it's attempted to, to match. Yes. And, yes. and it's a pretty good match. I, I can click apply. And to me, this is the, the, the best way to get two shots to kind of uh, match together. Cool. You can see that? Yeah, yeah, they now look, they really come close together. Yeah. Oh, and that, come, that has a nice little rack focus effect on that. Yeah. Who did that? That's a good shot. Yeah, it was me. It was just a big, <laughs> well, I thought that was my shot. <laughs> it was, maybe it was. <laughs> no, I think it was your shot. Could you also save it as a preset? Like the, once you once you graded it, say, like save it as a preset uh, you can color grade and you, then apply it again that way? You can save presets. Um, you have to be in the color board. But one thing that you need to be aware of when you're in the color board is that uh, this is one preset for this uh, this particular mass. It's not going to save, like in other words, if you do save preset, yeah. it's not going to save the outside, inside, mass, the inside, inside. outside as uh, one thing. It's going to okay. save it as, it's going gonna, it's gonna to record essentially the color saturation exposure for that color. For the inside, for the inside mass, going to apply it to everything. Right, exactly. Okay. So it's, okay. it's not going to do what yeah, you think it's exactly going to do. Same, right. And when you did the match color thing, it's not actually applying the mask like you did no, before. It's, it's just not. trying to match the color as best as possible. It, it's in fact, in fact, yeah. if I go back here, you'll see uh, that there there is no, no mask, mask applied to it. But yeah. it does really match it quite well. Yeah, Steve, awesome. So great color correction uh, tools in Final Cut Pro 10. Yep. And if you want to learn more, if you want to learn more about Final Cut Pro 10, the place to go is RippleTraining.com. RippleTraining.com. Yeah. Steve, thank you very much. Glad to be here. It's fun. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.